God had asked him to do. And so his fear was from in a good place. And it was kind of fear out of respect and knowing that I'm going to have the almighty God supporting me. And I know as long as I'm doing what he asks, good things are going to happen. And when you came in today, you got to read a Bible verse. And that Bible verse is very important about the message that we're going to talk about today. Because Moses and Pharaoh treated what God was saying to totally different ways. So I get that Bible verse, and if I can get you to help me, I want to try to read this Bible verse all together. Do you think we can do that? Wow, are you dead out there? Do you think we can read it together? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, one, two, three. Blessed is the man who always fears the Lord, but he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Let's try that one more time. Blessed is the man who always fears the Lord, but he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Now Moses, he was fearful, but I think even the version you read said he was resp out of respectful. He who respects God. And so you can be fear and oh, I'm back here kind of way, I'm scared. Or you can be fearful in a way that, hey, I know that I should be doing the right thing. I know this is right and I'm respectful. I'm, I'm fearful out of respect for someone. Kind of like maybe your parents, when your parents ask you to do things, you do them because you respect them, right? Well, as you know, Moses was going to go in front of Pharaoh. When Moses was going to Pharaoh, he had a little stuttering problem. So, so God said, you know, take your brother Aaron with him. He will do the speaking for you and ultimately for me. I'm going to talk to you and tell you what to do, and then you're going to instruct Aaron. So Moses and Aaron go in front of Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And as Pastor Mike said, Pharaoh just laughed. And he's laughing. He's like, what are you, crazy? There's no way they do all this stuff for me. I am not letting your people go. You must be mad. Well, at that point, Moses knew that God had instructed him to lay down his staff. And when it hit the ground, it turned into a stake. Now you would think that maybe Pharaoh would get his attention a little bit, but not him. He was so hard, he was so stubborn, his heart was kind of like these bricks. He just laughed and said, hey, magician, come here. Hey, magician, come here. They come down, do that. They take, they have sticks and they throw them on the ground and they turn into snakes. Well, something very interesting happens. The snake that God made out of Moses' staff went and ate the other two snakes. Now, that still didn't soften Pharaoh's heart whatsoever. He was still hardening his heart. He said, you know what, Moses, that's just a trick. I don't believe you. I don't believe your God. I don't believe the message you're bringing to me. I don't believe anything that you have to say. As a matter of fact, Moses, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go back and tell your people that not only are they going to have to work harder, I'm going to give them less food. I'm going to give them less breaks. They're going to have to double their output. They're going to really, really suffer. Now, anybody out there ever gotten in trouble for something that somebody else did? Like your buddy got you in trouble, your brother, your sister? You probably didn't like them a whole lot at that moment, right? Well, that's what the Hebrew people were. They, they, they thought, Moses, you're supposed to come and you're our deliverer. You're supposed to come do good things for us. And now we have to work twice as hard and we're getting less breaks and we're, we're not getting food and we're not getting water and we're suffering. What are you doing? What are you doing? I can't believe it. And this was discouraging to Moses. But he knew that he was on God's path. He knew he was doing what God had asked him to do. And God came to him and said, Moses, I want you to take care of and I want you to go down to the Nile River. And the Nile River is really important to the people of the land. I mean, it's where they get their life from. It's water, it's fish, it's all, it's water for their crops. It's how they get up and down and go to different places and bring supplies in. I mean, it is really important. Matter of fact, water is probably one ingredient that we all have to have in our bodies in order to live. So this was pretty important. Those Moses go down to the river and when you see Pharaoh, I want you to ask him to let our people go again. And so Pharaoh goes down to the, or Moses goes down to the water with Aaron and says, Pharaoh, please let our people go. What do you think Pharaoh said? No. No. He's laughed again. He's like, come on, Moses, we've been through this. There's no way. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. You're a joke. No way. He, his heart continued to harden. 
Well, at that point, Moses told Aaron to take the rod and stick it into the water. And when he put the water, his rod into the water, what happened? Exactly. It turned to blood. Now, I just said this is the lifeline of the people, and it turned to blood. And we all know that blood is kind of stinky, and it can't really live in it. So those crocodiles and fish and hippos and maybe birds and all the things that live around the Nile and in the Nile, they all die. Well, you would, Pharaoh, that might get his attention, right? You think it would get his attention? No, you were right. He just said, magicians. Come here, tell me, how did this happen? The magician scrambled together and said, oh, oh, wait a minute, they mixed up a little potion or something and threw it in the water, and they turned it in. Now, something very interesting, and I'm going to have a video in a second, but the really interesting things about the first plague, which was the blood and the snake, is that the magicians weren't able to turn it back. When Moses reached down and picked up his staff, when it was a snake, it turned back into a staff. When God said... Turn the Nile back to water, it turned back to water. This is something that the magicians could repeat. We're going to take one quick second, watch this video, and I'll come out and talk about the rest of it. about blood. And the next 
plague that came, and I got a list of some more plagues here. The first ones I'm going to talk about was kind of, you know, they're kind of cute. They're, they're all right. Matter of fact, my son, we keep a few of these little guys here, and it's frogs. Now, I got some frogs in here, and they're going to come over here with the camera, so you should be able to see them a little bit. And, you know, inside here, they're kind of cute. They hop around. They're fun. We like to catch them in our yard. We put them in here and keep them as pets. Now, they're cute in here, but how would you like it if when you went to crawl in bed and you crawled under your covers and there were like a thousand frogs? And you went to lay your head on your pillow and it was all frogs. And you went to pour out your cereal in the morning and frogs came out. And frogs were just everywhere you look. And then, you know, in the movie it talked briefly and it said in the power of, I think, Rom or whoever their god that they worship was. The interesting thing about frogs is even with them, the Egyptian people, they believed that frogs had special power. They, they believed that there was something special about them, so they couldn't kill them. So these frogs were everywhere, and it was driving them crazy. And do you think this got Pharaoh's attention? No. Do you think it got Pharaoh's attention? No, no it did not. He said, I don't like this, but Moses, I want it to go away, but my heart is hard. I don't believe you, but I want it to go. And Moses said, okay, when do you want me to ask God to take the frogs away? Now, if that were you, what would you have said? Now? Yeah. Right. I would have said yesterday. I, don't, I want them gone yesterday. Get them out of here immediately. You know what Pharaoh did? He said, uh, how about tomorrow? Go ahead. Just, we're all right. This isn't so bad. I'm, I'm pretty tough. I can handle it. I'm a big person. I believe in me. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Make it happen tomorrow. Well, of course, Moses prayed to God and the frogs went away. But because Pharaoh continued to harden his heart, another plague came on the land. Now, this is another interesting plague in that it's gnats. Now, we don't really know what gnats meant back then. Some people think it's lice. There was another uh, version I read that said mosquitoes. Everybody know what a mosquito is? Yeah, exactly. We also, I'm going to talk about it as if they were mosquitoes. And you know, they said that the mosquitoes form from the dust of the land. Now that dust of the land would probably be sand. But imagine as I dropped these, all of these turned into mosquitoes. And you were in here and this room just started to fill full of thousands upon hundreds of thousands of pounds, millions of mosquitoes. Would that be very comfortable? No, no we would not be happy. Would, we, would that get our attention? No. Yes. Yeah, it would get my attention. Did it get Pharaoh's attention? No. no, it did not. Again, Pharaoh said, you know what? I don't like this, but my heart is still hard. I still don't respect your God. I don't respect you, Moses, and I'm not going to let your people go. So again, another plague comes on the land, flies. Now, I don't like flies, especially at picnics. When I get that big juicy cheeseburger and I've got lettuce and tomato and ketchup and mayo and cheese, and I'm getting ready to take that big bite, and, I'm, ah, and a fly lands right there. Don't like that at all. But you know what? This wasn't just a few flies. It wasn't just the kind that you do this and you chase them around and you hang a little tape and they stick to them and they, they're dead. No, this was thousands and millions of flies. And not only were they flies, anybody know what a horse fly is? Ever been bitten by a horse fly? No, I haven't been bitten. They were biting flies. Now, again, do you think Pharaoh would pay attention? Yeah, you would think he would, but he didn't. Again, he said, I am not letting your people go. It's just not going to happen. I don't believe you. And you know what? Some of the things that you've created, my magicians can create. About this time, even his magicians were saying to him, the people of Egypt were saying, this is not right. This is the finger of God. This is not, we cannot do this. We cannot make this. We cannot take it back. You need to start listening. But Pharaoh's heart was so hard that he didn't. And you know, God doesn't talk to us through a burning bush or things like that. But when people are around us, like our parents and our teachers and our pastor and all that, we've got to listen. We've got to open up our ears and open up our hearts to hear because that's what was going on here. Pharaoh should have been listening to those around him, heeding the warning of those around him. And good things may have happened. Now next, 
We're going to go to another Bible verse. Just before I kind of hit these last